Hi, everybody. <laughs> this makes me feel like Christmas. It is... Uh, it's November. November 2nd, so... So, okay. Anyway. So, I want to do 10 for 10, which is 10 questions in 10 minutes. And we're going to cover watercolor paper. I want to do a series, and it would be, you know, supplies. So, let's start... And let me get my questions ready here. All right, first question. What type of paper is best for watercolor? That would be watercolor paper. I know that sounds like I'm being condescending, but there's, uh, let me explain. <laughs> so watercolor paper as in specifically for watercolor, not student grade that says watercolor, because my experience <laughs> was that I got watercolor paper that was student grade and it said watercolor on it. So I was thinking, okay, I'm going to save money and buy this because it says watercolor on it. It should work great. And it didn't. And it was really frustrating to use. On top of that, I didn't know what I was doing. And I thought I could just learn it on my own, which I could have, but I was more frustrated than excited about learning, on, learning it on my own. So, you know... Maybe different people, I don't know. For me, no. <laughs> I wanted somebody to show me how to do it and just get to the point. I just want to get to the point because what I want to learn is I consider very, very beautiful and I don't really care what other people think about <laughs> the style that I love. Um, and it requires you to be precise. It requires you to really know the supplies, how they behave. And I love that I know what I know and I want to share what I know. So anyway, let's get to the next question. <laughs> okay, so do you have to wet watercolor paper? Uh, no, actually there is wet on dry technique. There's wet on wet technique. And the two techniques produces different effects. And so it depends on what you want to do. Also, if this is asking about stretching the paper, it that depends on how wet you're painting. If you're really like laying it on there and letting the water drip and all that, that those effects and you're wanting the gradients to show up in granulating paint. There's a lot to paint, by the way. We'll do that in the next video. But um I uh, no, so no. The answer is no because you actually paint on dry paper bone dry paper <laughs> to do sharp edges that's how you get sharp edges is painting on dry paper with your paintbrush that's the wet on dry <laughs> okay so no it's not necessary to always wet your watercolor paper before painting because that depends on the effect that you want okay number three what is the best paper for beginners in watercolor Again, this depends. If your style requires you to be precise, to be accurate, to really, really pay attention to what you're doing, go for the quality right away. Um, and even some other uh, styles, I would recommend just going for Arsh right off the bat. <laughs> Don't even waste your time. Um, but it really does depend on the style because some styles can get away with lesser quality papers. There's like, uh, I call it modern painting, modern florals, where it's mainly the brush strokes. For the most part, that can get away with it, but I would still recommend real 100% cotton made for watercolor paper. My favorite is Arsh. Arsh. I, I learned how to pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> Arsh. So that's my favorite, but of course there's others out there. Um, and they all have their pros and cons. Okay, so there's not really a per perfect paper. It's paper that you love. That's the perfect paper, in my opinion. Okay, so number four. What is the difference between hot press and cold press paper? That's easy. Hot press is pressed to be smooth very smooth and that's the kind of paper that I do or, or I use mainly 
Now you can see this one, and this is B watercolor paper. It only comes, as far as I know, one type of texture, and it's kind of a cold press, mm, between a cold press and a hot press. And even with this, it can be a little bit difficult to um, get details, but I mean, it's totally doable. You can do it on cold press harsh paper. It's just kind of frustrating to get around the bumps. But yeah, this paper works pretty good. It's half the price. At least when I bought it, it's, it was half the price of Arsh. So it was going to be my student, or not my student, but my study paper. And every time I paint on it, I, I notice a big difference between Arsh hot press and this paper. Arsh is really fantabulous. <laughs> it's really nice. I mean, I love it. Um, I, you know, there's other papers. It's just my favorite. So yeah, and you can see how, um, well, maybe you can see, I'm not sure, but it buckles and stuff. And Arsh will buckle too. Don't think that it won't, unless you stretch it. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> Number five, <laughs> what is the texture of watercolor paper? Oh wait, did I even answer? Okay, the difference, hold on. Number four, the difference between hot press and cold press is that hot press is smooth and cold press is a little bit more rough, but not as rough as rough paper. So those that's the difference. And hot press is made for really detailed work. And then cold press is more versatile because you can do detailed work and you can do, you know, you can get a uh, texture out of it too. And then rough is very uh, textured and a lot of dry brushing techniques show up on rough and it looks good. Um, yeah. So let's see. Number five, what is the texture of watercolor paper? Well, we just discussed that. <laughs> I just grabbed these from the internet. So the texture, there's hot, which is smooth, cold, which is in between hot and rough. So there's three different um, textures. And then depending on the brand, you could have really uh, repeated pattern, which you don't really want. At least I don't like it. I like more random looking pattern so that it's not so, I don't know what to call it, but I don't like uh, obvious print on the paper, but it doesn't really matter. It's, it's whatever you like. Um, okay. Number six, what is the best paper texture for watercolor? This depends on your style. Cold press is the most versatile, so you can go detailed or you can get textures out of it. So it is what I would recommend when you're starting. Um, unless you really know what you want, then like me, <laughs> I knew exactly what I wanted and I wanted the details, the, the precision and all that. That's what I wanted. So I knew right away. So I was in hot press right away, but I have a lot of cold press papers to play with. And I also have rough because I think it's important to play in all the papers, including student grade, just so you know, you know what you're getting and you know that there's a difference between the papers and you learn your supplies better. Um, I do, so even if you bought paper that's not the best, you can use it for sketching. It's not a big deal, you know. You, you can't mess up. So don't worry about, oh my God, what paper do I get? You can't mess up. You're gonna have to play with all of it. You're gonna use all of it anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So just, just move forward. That's the most important thing is taking action and moving forward. All right. Number seven, what is the best paper for beginner watercolor painting? Um, so I recommend going straight for the best, right? Arsh. And if you're wanting to experiment, cold press 140 pounds is what I would recommend if you're not, you know, too sure about which way. Or you could go with the B watercolor paper. I would just recommend 100% watercolor paper, not just 100% cotton, 100% watercolor paper. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> 100% cotton <laughs> watercolor paper. And it can't just be 100% cotton paper. It has to be sized for watercolor. So it has to be 
Not has to be. I recommend 100% cotton watercolor paper. <laughs> All right. Even for beginners, 100%. I believe in you. <laughs> okay, what weight watercolor paper is best for beginners? Oh, I, I mentioned that, 140 pounds. Um, it's a good, good weight. That's, that's what I use really most of the time. I, I have 300 pounds, but it's, I don't find it that necessary, really. So, I mean, it's nice, <laughs> but I don't think it's necessary. For, I mean, for some things, for sure. For like professional, big and awesome paintings, and uh, then yes. But as a beginner, no. <laughs> Okay, that's number eight. Okay, let's see. What is the difference between watercolor paper and watercolor block? Okay, the only difference, and people will argue with this, because there's a myth going on that these are pre-stretched, and they're not. Unless the manufacturer says specifically, not the seller, the seller will lie to you. If the manufacturer, like the place that made the paper, states it is pre-stretched, don't assume it's pre-stretched because it's not. And, and it's not a big deal. If you're not painting heavily wet types of paints, you know, it's not going to be that big a deal. But it will buckle. The only convenience for it is that it's bound. It's glued. Most likely on four sides if you're doing expensive, but sometimes it's only two sides. Um, I personally don't care for bound <laughs> blocks. It's nice for plein air, like, or traveling, because it's already, you know, taped down to something. And when you're painting, you kind of, most of the time, you kind of want it to be taped down somehow. Like, even this one, I've taped down the edges because, you know, it buckles. And it, you know, can be a little bit annoying. But it's not, when you're doing detailed like this, this is not a lot of water, really. So it's not as big a deal. But if you're doing heavy water, like you're really doing gradual or gradient changes in paint, uh, like watercolor pouring, which I love, <laughs> um, that requires you to stretch your paper on gator board. That is fun. It's, I love that. I love watercolor pouring and I wanna teach that too. So the difference between watercolor paper and a watercolor block, that's not a good question because it, it's all watercolor paper. No matter if you're getting watercolor rolls, you know, big, big roll where you can roll out like eight feet and you can have an eight feet um, watercolor painting. Those are the rolls, a big roll. Or sheets is the next size down. And that's about 30 to 20, you know, 30 by 20 inches. Like, I don't, I don't know exactly, 22 inches by 34 maybe? I don't know. I don't know it exactly, but it's a big sheet that you can cut up. And it's actually cheaper to do it that way, especially Jackson's has a paper sale every year. I think about February. And even though they're way in the UK, they're worth it, I think. They're worth buying from as far as that sale goes and a lot of times a lot of their paints go on sale anyway <laughs> i'm going off topic again so let's see there is no difference between watercolor paper and a block aside from it's glued from all sides okay question number 10 what is the purpose of a watercolor block oh convenience that's really in my opinion all it is it's convenience and it is so expensive for that convenience and i don't I don't have any blocks except for the ones that I was holding up in the thumbnail. Two sizes to, to try out. Um, those are the only. Oh no, that's not true. Okay, never mind. <laughs> when you become an artist, you're gonna end up being a collector of things. <laughs> so I have so many different papers and so many different paints and all the colors because I have like full set collector syndrome. <laughs> but it's fun, but you don't need that much though. You really don't. And I can, I can help you with that. <laughs> All right, so that's 10 questions in 10 minutes. Um, I don't even know. I don't know 
Oh, shoot. We're at 15 minutes, so I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> so watch the next video. I think it's going to be right here somewhere. All right. Have a good day. See you later. Bye. Oh, let's go back. Bye.